and welcome to The Beef Edge, the Chagas Beef Podcast, for all your latest news, information and advice for Irish beef farmers. I'm Catherine Egan and I'm joined by Newford Farm Technician, Michael Fagan, to review the performance of the herd in Athenry. I first asked Michael to recap on what Newford Farm is all about. It's a suckler calf to beef demonstration farm and we're situated here in Athenry in County Galway. The farm itself was, was set up by Chagas and Dawn Meats in 2015 with the support of the Irish Farmers Journal and McDonald's. It is what it, the, the new for farm itself, it's a 100 suckler cow calf to beef demonstration farm and it's running on an adjusted 68 hectares. It's made up of four blocks, obviously the home block and then three outside farms. One of the farms is four kilometers away from us and the other two farms is 12. So as you can appreciate, a lot of pl- plotting and planning needs to go into when you have outside farms to, to, that soaks up a lot of your day-to-day routine. The cow type itself on the farm, it comprises of first cross Aberdeen Angus and Hereford cows, early maturing breeds, and they're all bred from the dairy herd. Now, our herd below, our, our suckler herd, the cow type itself has attracted a lot of attention here among many visiting farmers and discussion groups. And all indications today shows our breeding policy with good carefully selection of the ICBF terminal sires can achieve good high carcass weights for our, ops, for our bullocks and heifers here on the farm. And along with coming from the Coming from the cow itself, it's, she's an excellent milk production, obviously coming from the dairy herd, which produced lightweight gains here onto their offsprings. Newford Farm itself, it's a seven year program and here in 2021 will be the start of our seven year. And overall, how did the Weanans perform on the farm this year? The Weanans was actually one of our better years for, for our Weanans here. Our Weanans, a little bull Weanans, our male Weanans did an average day at a gain of 1.39 at Weanan and our heifers did 1.30. Our, I suppose I've had after, our housing took place on the 30th of October and we would have liked to have kept our, house, our weanings out until maybe the 10th or the 12th of November if, if everything was normal. But as you can appreciate here in the west of Ireland, it does rain a lot. We had almost seven inches of rain here in October. So hence, we knew coming in at the end of October, we we're going to have to house the animals earlier. So on the 30th of October, the decision was made and we housed our little male whalings at 355 kilos. And I have to say that was of, of the six years of the program so far, that is one of our best housing weights for the male whalings. And they did 1.28 of an average daily gain from birth to housing. And I suppose our targets for those lads, Catherine, like they're going to be, I would like them to do a 0.75 to 0.8 over the winter period. So they're going to be in more or less for 134 days and I would like them to put on at least 100 kilos if at all possible and if all goes to plan like the winning at 355 I would like them to be coming out roughly at 455 kilos all that's all weather dependent if, if they should be going around St Patrick's Day that's what my my targets for the little male whalings and for the heifers themselves once like the little bull like the male whalings our, it was our best housing weight they went they were at 350 kilos going in and they did a an average day at again a 1.23 from from birth to housing and like the little the bullocks i would hope they would do a 0.6 to 0.65 over the winter period putting on 80 kilos it would be nice if we could return them out probably february 2021 but I suppose realistic if they're going out st patrick's day it would be great to have them going out at around 430 kilos and if i could get them going out at 430 kilos it'll give them a great head start going into the grazing season of 2021 all the Waylands are getting an 18% crude protein ration, and, and that's made up of 55% rolled barley, 7% molasses, and 21% of soya, and the rest is made up of minerals. The Waylands were on ration there before, prior to weaning, but when they went into the house shed there on the 1st of November, we continued to get them to t- two kilos of the ration, and that could keep going for the month of November, December, and January. They are getting DMD silage of 73%. That was cut on the 25th of May. I know it's good quality silage and with the two kilos, if the animals keep performing well during the month of January, we would probably look at view of restricting the, the ration to the, to the weanings on that. Nearly all the steers have been finished on the farm this year. How did the steers perform? Yeah, the, just to give you a bit of background, our steers, we had 59 beef heifers and 46 steers to sell in Newford for slaughtering this, this year in 2020 in Newford. They were all sired by five-star terminal bulls, Fist and Gammon and Mullery and Trippet and Tropic Dubai and Elder, Elderberry Galahad. Just to give you an idea, the steers went out to grass at 437 kilos, so they, they had a great head start of a weight gain, live weight going out. 
They achieved 0.7, as, as I said, over the winter period. And unfortunately for us, I suppose May, June and July were three reasonably good grazing months. Un unlike the rest of the country where there was a bit of drought, it didn't affect us. It, it just, we had enough of rain, enough of heat, and gr the animals thrived immensely. And they were, they were lush green grass. The first three steers, we actually sold them off grass at 670 kilos at 19 months of age. So that'll give you an idea how, how good uh, they thrived over them few months well, with no meal feeding. They were all at 164 days of grass before slaughter and they were killed on the 2nd of September and the graded R equals three minus with a 55% uh, kill out and a carcass weight of 370, which is ex very good for that 19 month age bullock. And the remaining 43 steers then, I have to say, we started introducing meals then from the 4th of September from them and they were housed on the 2nd of October. And the autumn this year was very good because we could afford to leave them out until the 2nd of October. And from the 4th of September to the 2nd of October, they consumed 136 kilos of concentrate. So as you can appreciate, we start them off at two, two to three, and just before housing around five kilos. So they came in on the 2nd of October, we upped them an extra kilo to six kilos on the 12% crew protein ration. And that is made up of, that ration was made up of 26% barley, flake maize and ground maize at 21%, soy hulls at 15, distillers at seven, and molasses at five, and all in all, then the minerals was made up the balance of it. Michael, how, how has this compared to other previous years? Yeah, we've all, the, all the bullocks are gone now, except one which will be sold now in early January. The bullocks this year, all of them degraded R equals three equals. They had a carcass weight at 350, and there were 644 kilos lightweight going up the ramp of the lorry with a kill out of 54%. Now they've all been sold between 20 to 21 months of age and the bullocks this year come into 1,355 euros, give or take. Now that's roughly about 40 euros more compared to last year, 2019. But I suppose we'd also bear in mind there, with the autumn being so good, we have, reju we have re re given them less meal this year and we've also saved a lot on silage. So that has been a big plus for us this year. Michael, over half of the heifers finished off grass this year. How did they perform? Yeah, we had 59 beef heifers to sell this year. They went out to grass there on the 23rd of March at 411 kilos, which was a great start for them going out. The first two heifers were sold there at 17 months of age. They graded U minus 4 minus at 280 kilos, which is a very good grade for those at that age. Unfortunately, we had a bit of a breakout of coccidiosis for the rest of the heifers, so we couldn't sell any more until the 4th of October. But the 26 heifers that went on the 4th of October, those heifers graded R equals three equals, and they had a carcass weight of 288 kilos with no meals being fed whatsoever at grass. And they came into 1,127 euros. The remaining 31 heifers, like the bullocks, we introduced meals to them on the 4th of September, but they were not housed until the 27th of October, which was very unusual for the number of years I've been working there in Newford Farm. Previous years, we would have brought those heifers maybe in on the 4th, or mid September. So we got an extra grazing, nearly a five weeks months gra five weeks grazing of grass before we had to bring them in this year, which made an awful difference. When they did come in there on the 27th of October, those heifers received five kilos of, of their 12% coarse ration, along with good quality 75% DMD silage. And as those heifers came fit, they were drafted. And like the bullocks, we have one heifers to be sold in early January. The heifers themselves graded R equals three equals, with them all gone. They had a carcass weight of just under 300 kilos. They went up the ramp at 572 kilos and had a kill out percentage of 52%. And they were killed between 20 and 21 months of age. The value of those heifers for us this year came into 1,185 euros. And that's 70 euros more or less compared to the heifers in 2019 who came into 1,117. But not alone were we up to 70 euros, we had also had that saving on the meal and also the saving of the, of the silage in the pit. So how to compare over it, it was a good year for us for the beef sales on our, on our bullocks and heifers. All stock are housed on the farm at the moment. What's happening on the farm? Yeah, I suppose as we approach into here in the month of January, I suppose the main animal that's getting all the attention now is the, is the cow, the suckler cow herself. I suppose when we brought the cow in in uh, October there for housing, all our cows were penned according to their body condition score. And any cow that was three and a half plus, the, those cows were put into a separate section of pens in the yard. The cows that was two and a quarter, three and a half were put into another, were grouped together and put into another part of the yard. And the cows anywhere from one and a half, a little bit above it, they were penned together. And those actually 10 cows 
are getting two kilos of soya hulls. And this started actually from in the month of December, so again, December and all of January. I suppose the big thing that we'd want to watch out now for going into this month is to watch the, the cows that are kind of good body condition score. And we might start reducing the silage to them, restricted silage amount to them. In other words, when we're feeding them in the morning, we might be, wouldn't be as pushing the silage into them that much in the evenings, just to keep them under, under slim down. I suppose we started introducing pre-mineral cabin minerals to the cows there in the 1st of December, which was 100 grams per cow. We pour that over the silage there every morning and the cows take up, take up through the silage there and there's no problem whatsoever taking it in. Our silage that them cows are on at the moment was cut, it's first cut silage, it was cut into 10th of June. It's 68 DMD. We actually went for bulk rather than quality because obviously we don't want the cows in too much prime condition calv calving down. We'd expect our calving maybe to start around the first week in February, but I suppose in previous years we have found that calves could come anywhere from the 15th or 16th of January. So we just need to keep our eyes peeled in to have everything organized that no calf arrives too early at that stage. What are the key tests for January 2021? I suppose the key thing is now leading into the next week, so at 6th or 7th of January, we need to do all the cows for water back. Uh, all, the first, all the early calvers will be done around the 6th or 7th, and then any of the latter ones will be done around the 14th of February. The big things we'll be doing there in the last couple of days is getting the sheds organised, having them all clean and disinfected for calving, having all our calving equipment organised, picked, laid out there on the table so we've not to do, but just a stretch with it. And I suppose the big thing that I do be, I am very advocate on is having lime, maybe douse all the lime down, the slats all down with lime, because as you can appreciate, as cows are bagging up now, we, there could be just dropping milk and we need to have lime to, there on all the slats to keep all the bugs and, and infections under control. And as the cows begin to get near calvin, we'll be pulling them off and put them onto bedded, straight, bedded straw shed there. And we'll be also dousing that down with lime as well too, just to make sure we have no infections going into it. And if everything works out fine, we expect the calves to come in around the first week of February. And like this, year, like 2020, maybe it was a freak year as the calf down, we were nearly be able to turn the calves out to grass. The 6th or 7th of February of 2020, we were turning cows and calves out to grass and they stayed out. So it would be an, ad an additional bonus. We could do the same again this year. Michael, you mentioned that you're liming the slats. How often do you lime the slats? Yes, Catherine. We do it there every morning. We put lime on the slats there. We scrape down the slats and just give the, all the slats there a dousing down. Not, not an over amount, but just enough to kill any bugs or infections, just as the cows there are bagging up. And as the cows move over there to the bed, it's straw as they're waiting to calve down. We do douse all the lime, straw down as well with lime. And it does make an awful difference to keep bugs and infections under there under control. Because there are a number of years we did have mastitis there on the yard. And when we introduced the lime, it, it cut out all that infection and made life much more easier going forward for us. Finally, Michael, you've been very innovative and new for 2020 as no visitors were allowed onto the farm due to COVID-19 and you were complying with all the restrictions, yet you still got all the messages from the farm out to farmers. How have you been doing this? Yeah, with COVID-19, obviously, since the, farmer, the farmers, the students and the discussion groups couldn't come to Newford, we decided that we'd bring Newford to the farmers and the, and the students, so all the ag colleges, that we produced eight videos on the farm this year and have been very successful. I suppose the eight videos have all taken place or have all taken into mind of what has happened over the last 12 months. The last two videos that went out there was, uh, was based on the beef, heifers and bullock sales. We did a video there on round bale silage on our grass updates throughout through the year, breeding policy in 2020. A very interesting video was done there on stress fee on the wean and sucklers. And a normal one there was done on just a suckler herd performance update. And then we did an exceptional one there on, on the beef scheme. So these are all on the Chagas Facebooks and they, they can be viewed or on YouTube, they can be viewed at any time. And we have, we got serious amount of hits on it. So they're very much in depth information there and straight to the point. Thanks very much, Michael. I'll include the links for the videos on the text with the podcast. Happy New Year to you. Thank you, Catherine. That's all for this week's episode. And my thanks to Michael for joining me on the show. You can catch up on all other shows and interviews from the Beef Edge podcast on the Chagas website at chagas.ie. Or you can listen on Apple and Google podcasts as well as Spotify. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe so you never miss a show. For all other updates from our Beef program, keep an eye on our Twitter and Facebook pages. I'm Catherine Egan and thanks for listening.